Hey, so yesterday was day two. Uh, I was extraordinarily busy, so I wasn't able to uh, hit the record button yesterday and kind of talk, but some some awesome things happened yesterday. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to kind of recap them. So I did this activity. I'd never done it before. Uh, usually, I'll have at least one day a week where I do some team building activities with my classes. Specifically, I've done it with uh, a theology class that I teach. I also teach math the other half of my day. And so I decided that I was going to kind of incorporate those and do a team building activity. You know, I go online, I look up, oh, team building activities. And I've seen this, this activity a bunch of times, but I always thought to myself, ah, it's kind of juvenile. I don't know how it's going to work. So what I did was I went to um, a store that sells things for just $1, and I bought six puzzles. And I bought some 24-piece puzzles and some 48-piece puzzles. So what I did with the 24-piece puzzles was I literally put six sets of 24 puzzle pieces in a bag, shook them up, and then put 24 pieces in each box. And so I didn't tell the kids what was going on. I just divided them into their squads. There's six groups that I have for their class that I predetermined. And I put one instruction on the board. It said, do the puzzles. So they open them up. They start doing the, you know, flip them over, all that kind of stuff. And what was really interesting was pretty quickly, obviously, they figured out, oh, these don't all match. And in each class, so I did it for four classes yesterday, in each class, somebody went, oh, he wants us to collaborate. See, I've got these, these, these buzzwords in their head. Oh, he wants us to collaborate. And so what was really interesting was the next part of the activity when they would go around, collect all their puzzle pieces, and finish their puzzle, and they would say, I'm done. And I'd say, did you look at the instructions on the board? Do the puzzles kind of look at me a little bit, and they'd realize the goal was not just to do their puzzle, but they were connected with other people because they had, they had pieces from other puzzles, and they were supposed to help others complete all their puzzles. Last class I did this, fourth class of the day, we we're on block schedule. So fourth class of the day, at the end, there was one puzzle that was left undone. So it was a little bit challenging. It was a circle puzzle. It was 24 pieces. But they finally collected all the pieces. Everybody in the class was gathered around this table. And they're like, go, 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 go. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And so when we debrief the activity afterwards, I ask them what the purpose is. And they say, collaboration, teamwork, learn to help each other. I said, yeah, let's take it a little bit more literally. Each person has pieces to the puzzle that we're building this year, not only in what we're doing maybe in math or, or in, in a topical, whatever you want to call it. Um, my theology class, they kind of saw themselves as pieces of a bigger puzzle, God's puzzle that he's building. But ultimately, what we came down to was, in any situation, you just never know who's got the missing piece. And in one class, it was pretty cool. A piece got kind of lost, it got shoved under a box, and so there's one puzzle incomplete, in, incomplete. And they finally found it, and it was like, wow, you know, sometimes there's just a puzzle piece just missing, and eventually it comes around. And so we talked all of this great stuff about, you know, what it's like to solve puzzles, how everybody can contribute, and it was so awesome. It was, it was, a, it was an activity that I've been dragging my feet on for years, but for six bucks, we had about 20 minutes of great conversation about life, about your place on the planet, about, you know who you are, what you have to offer, and the value that you have. Even if you might not be the person holding 23 of the pieces, you might have the one that completes the puzzle. Amazing stuff yesterday. And so uh, I just kind of want to wrap up here by saying that was a quality activity, and it was one of those things for me as a teacher uh, in my 10th year of teaching where I thought to myself, I finally did it. Like I finally found a way, like, that, that real life, it didn't feel fake to me. It didn't feel forced to me to kind of insert it in there. Oh, you can solve this problem like life. It was like, a, hey, you really had to work together. Hey, you really had to talk. Hey, you really had to communicate. And you're going to have that in life. And so I felt like this, this sense of satisfaction uh, for this activity that I dragged my feet on for probably three years. Um, and it was everything. It was everything I wanted it to be. It was, it was exciting. It was fun. It was impactful. It was helpful. It helped me teach a lesson about theology, but it also helped me teach a lesson about math, which was, I mean, incredible. And so uh, I guess my takeaway for today is just, or from yesterday, would be, you know, never give up on an activity. Um, and never underestimate your students because they're, they're, they're incredible. Um, and they could see the value in things. 
And there's sometimes a deeper level, sometimes not. But, but as you do these activities with kids, their excitement is genuine. It was a puzzle, a 24-piece puzzle with a, with a cartoon character on it. It didn't have to be flashy. It didn't have to be lights. It can be sometimes, but, but it was such a simple thing, and they got such joy out of it. So my encouragement to you today is try something. They're going to love it. They're going to love you. And if you love them and you're giving them quality things that have a purpose, there's going to be quality to be had in the activity, and it's going to enrich your class uh, for days and weeks to come as you, as you build that foundation. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time.